Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and on this episode of Sonar Fishing, we're gonna talk about Ozark Lakes. That's right, you guys in the in the Midwest, we're gonna give you some love and talk about my favorite baits for fishing in the spring, so primarily pre-spawn right now. And uh, I'm just gonna kinda break down the, the different baits that I love to throw on lakes like Table Rock, Beaver Lake, Bull Shoals, uh, all those those uh, you know uh, uh, Ozark lakes. There's there's some lakes like Lake of the Ozarks that I've actually never been to before. But the the White River chain I've been to quite a bit. I've uh, you know when we were uh, uh, hosting Sweetwater, uh, it was a, a regular occurrence to go to Table Rock and the lakes surrounding it, like Taney Como and, and Bull Shoals. I fished a uh, TBF National Championship on Bull Shoals and lost. The 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 hundred thousand dollar living the dream package by four ounces still a little bit of a sore subject but I love the uh, the White River chain and just overall Ozark lakes so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the different baits that I really like to throw during the pre spawn and the in general the Ozark lakes are phenomenal you know a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is really revolving around my experiences with Table Rock because I've had more experience with Table Rock than probably any of the other ones but the the same principles the same baits the same techniques the same approaches approach or uh, uh, you know are are good for bull shoals and beaver uh, as well, and I've, I do have a lot of experience there. All right, so the first bait that I wanna show you that I always have tied on when I go to the Ozarks, especially during the pre-spawn, is this puppy right here, a suspending jerk bait. Uh, this is the Berkeley Stunna. I'm not sponsored by Berkeley. Uh, I actually don't have a hard bait sponsor in general, but um, this one has quickly become my favorite jerk bait. It has a really wide, wild action. It is a slow sinker, which is very similar to the very popular um, Vision 110, which I still love. Um, so both of these baits are, are baits that I would throw. And actually, these are two colors that I really like for Ozark Lakes. Uh, I think this one's called Northern Lights, and this is a Pro Blue. So Pro Blue is well known uh, for for you know those those lakes like uh, you know uh, Table Rock in the Ozarks, but. A suspending jerkbait is perfect on Ozark Lakes. So the reason for this is you've got endless clear water. The Ozarks are just, you know, they're big highland or even, you know, branching out into the canyon reservoir category. They've got deep clear water. And so the fish can use their sense of vision to, uh, to find bait as opposed to like vibration and by sound. Uh, they're primarily utilizing and, and leaning on their, their vision. And so a jerkbait is a really good pro or a technique to appeal to fish they're they're using their sense of sight and you know usually I'm going to be fishing this uh, pretty much everywhere on the uh, on the Ozark lakes you know I'm, I'm going to be focusing on uh, you know secondary points main lake points uh, not, humps not so much you know during the pre-spawn but one situation that I'm definitely going to be throwing a suspending jerk bait is on transition banks. So whenever you have a, a bank that say it's a 45 degree angle bank and it's leading into the back of a spawning pocket and right now it's pre-spawn. And so those fish are going to be making their way from the main lake or the main creek channel to the back of those pockets. And so those transition banks, uh, you know, they may not seem like much because we're, we're so hyper-focused on points and, and define structure, but those transition banks can be really good. And a jerkbait is a really good bait to throw down those transition banks, especially if you've got standing timber like you see in the Ozarks all the time. This is a really good bait to, to be able to use in that situation. And with the advent of forward-facing sonar, this bait just gets better and better with age because you know you can actually see the fish if you have forward facing sonar you can see them on your screen and you can change up your your cadence with the jerk bait to uh to appeal to that individual fish so it's a really really cool bait to be able to use that's really shined with forward facing sonar in this generation of, of electronics 
So as far as the tackle that I'm gonna be using with a suspending jerk bait on the Ozarks, I'm usually gonna use pretty light line, eight or 10 pound test. I, I like to use it on bait casting gear. I've gone back and forth with spinning gear. My buddy, Matt Steffen, he loves spinning gear for, for jerk baits. I, I've tried it, I've gone back to it, but I really like my bait casting gear and I use a 7.2 medium action versus series rod and I use uh, a 7.2 to one gear ratio reel for that. I kind of bounce between a 7.2 to one and an 8.1 to one. Uh, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about which one's better. The 8.1 to one works great. Anything in that higher you know, moderately high to high end gear ratio range, I think is gonna work great for, for uh, jerk baits because you can catch up with the fish really quick and also reel in the slack really quick, which is essentially all you're doing with a jerk bait. Uh, and then the line that I use, I think I kind of brushed over that. Uh, again, I'm using an eight to 10 pound test, but I like to use Seaguar and Vizix. And Vizix is, is formulated to be softer and, and you know, be a little bit, uh, little bit more flexible, so it allows this bait to have just a slightly better uh, action and wider arc uh, than other fluorocarbons when they get cold and kind of stiff. So jerk bait is for sure number one. But this next uh, category of bait, I say category of bait because there's actually three different baits in my box. Actually, it's four now but I haven't tried the fourth one, but I'm gonna, I'll show you. This right here is like an Ozark special box right here, okay? The one thing about the Ozarks, you guys that, that fish the Ozarks on a regular basis, I think the Ozarks are probably the most expensive uh, category of fisheries there is in the country. You throw Alabama rigs, you throw Vision 110s that are $25 a piece, you throw, uh, uh, you know, old pre Rapala wiggle warts. Um, you throw uh, all these different baits that just cost a fortune and they all have treble hooks or lots of hooks to snag on on, uh, on timber. So make sure you bring your, your, uh, uh, your American Express black card uh, to the Ozarks because it can get expensive. But this box right here is a very expensive box uh, because I've got a lot of pre Rapala wiggle warts in here. Let's see if I'll pull one out. I'll show you guys one. I actually don't fish them that much anymore, to be honest with you. Man, I need to get the hooks off of them. This right here. So I got a, I got a funny story about the, uh, the wiggle warts, the old original wiggle warts that I've got in here. Um, so I got in Alaska and uh, so we've got a lot of great clients up there and a lot of clients that I see from year to year and we've got this one client, his name's Gary and he knows his stuff. He comes up and, and he brings his own tackle. He loves fishing. He's really good at it. And, uh, and you know, we were talking about his, we were out there halibut fishing or salmon fishing. I can't remember which one. And we were out there and, and we we're discussing old baits. And he's like, well, I've got this old box of, of you know, old, old baits. I've got thousands of baits in it. And I'm like, well, do you have any wiggle warts? I didn't think he knew what a wiggle wart was. He's like, oh yeah, I've got some old old wiggle warts in there, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay. I, I just figured that he, he may have been mistaking it for something else. But um, we exchange addresses and about a month later, a box full of uh, pre rapala wiggle warts shows up to my door. So a uh, big thanks to uh, to Gary. This one right here isn't like a very popular color, but we've got some in like the you know the phantom browns and greens and and that kind of stuff. But uh, again, I don't generally use the the pre rapala wiggle warts all that much. Um, maybe it's just because I have a mental block for for throwing these. I've, I've I just don't want to lose them. Um, but that's a terrible reason not to throw them because they really, really do work. There's something about them that, that tends to, to really attract strikes. But I'll show you a bait that I really do love to throw that's very similar. And I think that, that oftentimes it catches more than the original wiggle wart. Hate to say that, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack, but this puppy right here, this is the Rock Crawler from Spro. And, uh, and I've got it in, in several different sizes. I would say that, you know, this size is my favorite all around. I forget the, the size, man. I, I'm so bad, oh, it says on the bottom. This is the 55. 
Uh, and then the smaller one that I like to throw if it's a little bit shallower, this one's the 50. So 50 and 55 uh, rock crawlers. These are really, really good baits because they have a great hunting action. They go over rock cover very, very well, which is really important on the Ozarks. They've got some great clear water color schemes because you know you can see how transparent and translucent these, these baits are. So they're very, very good in clear water, very realistic, come in great colors. You know, anything in this crawfish hue is what you're gonna wanna look for. So like the phantom green craw, phantom brown craw. Um, let me show you another color that I like. Like this one right here. This looks similar to the one I just showed you, but less red and more brown and green. This one is a really, really good one as well. But in general, these crankbaits in this box are really good at crawling over those rocky, uh, rocky banks. You know, whether it's shale, chunk rock, usually it's like gravel. You know, anywhere you find those transition zones, and again, we're, you're, you're looking at those transition banks. If you find a rocky transition, so from one type of rock to another, or one size of rock to another, uh, these these crankbaits work extremely well in those situations and they get tons of bites. So like, if I'm just trying to cover a ton of water and figure out where the fish are in you know relation to an entire creek or something like that, I'll drop the trolling motor and pick up one of these crankbaits, whether it's the rock crawler, the wiggle wart, uh, one that I'm gonna try this year, which is kind of the bonus that I was talking about, is the new Honey Badger. This isn't the color that I would use for the Ozarks right now, but um, the, the Money Badger, I said Honey Badger, but it's Money Badger. That one's a Berkeley one, and uh, I hear really, really good things about that. Uh, and also the, well, I'll just bring you all, all of them. The DT6s, these are, also going to be very, very uh, key players on the Ozarks. All of these crankbaits uh, have something in common. They all go over rock very well. The DT6s have a little bit tighter of a wobble. Um, the uh, the wiggle warts are a little bit more erratic. They're kind of they kind of have a crazy hunting action. I'm talking about when I say wiggle warts. I'm also talking about the rock crawlers and the um, what I hear about the money badger. But those, they, they have this, this wide kind of ranging hunting action that, that tends to get a lot of strikes. So those would be my absolute favorite, but I'd also go to the DT6 as well. And a lot of people also talk about the, the shad wraps. But I'm not a shad wrap guy yet, but um, I do hear a lot of people talking about them. So this box right here gets a lot of love when I go to the Ozarks. It's a, a box that's full of a lot of expensive baits, but um, very, very key player. Uh, so for these crankbaits, these kind of like a medium diving uh, rock oriented crankbaits, like, like I just showed you, these I like to use on 10 pound test fluorocarbon, okay? I'm usually using like a Brazex or like red label fluorocarbon. I'm gonna be fishing this again on that 7.2 medium action versus series rod. That's a really good rod for a lot of the different reaction baits you use on the Ozarks. And I'm gonna be using that on a 6.6 to one gear ratio reel. So just covering water, again, uh, transition rock banks are really big key. Uh, which there are plentiful, you know, opportunities to throw baits at, at transition rock on the Ozark lakes because it's just all rocks. Uh, you know, secondary points is a big, big deal for that. Um, but yeah, you, you're just you can use those as tools to just cover water, and they catch a ton of fish. And one of the coolest things about like the Ozark lakes is that most of them have all three species of bass. So if you're not catching largemouth, you're catching spots, and if you're not catching spots, you're catching smallmouth. Uh, it's just uh, it's just a lot of fun, and you can just go down a bank, and you, you'd start catching one species, then another, and then another, and uh, so. Crankbaits, those medium diving crankbaits are definitely one of my absolute favorites. So the next one is, is also a crankbait, and it's for those situations where maybe the fish are just shallower. You know, maybe the water's a little bit dirtier, maybe they're just closer to the shoreline. And so using a shallow diving flat-sided crankbait is a really big deal to me. 
And again, Mer Berkeley's been coming out with some pretty good hard baits recently. And this right here is the Fritz side. And, uh, and I really like this one. This one's the Fritz side five. Again, I buy the stuff, I use it. I don't really keep up with the nomenclature all that, that much, but uh, the, this one right here it would be my favorite, the five size and uh, just covering water with it. Again, you're, you're fishing it very similar to the, the medium diving crankbaits, just as a tool to cover a lot of water. Again, focus on those, those rocky transitions. And, you know, one of my favorite situations is like when you go from like pea gravel to a vein of like of chunk rock. That is a perfect situation to be throwing a bait like this in that like two to four foot range. Um, this one, I, I also use lighter fluorocarbon. I use 12 pound test with, with my uh, flat side crankbaits like the Fritz side. Uh, you know, and the reason for that is, is I feel like I'm making contact with the bottom a little bit more with the line with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just beef it up just a little bit. And uh, so I'm gonna be using the same exact rod, uh, 12 pound test, red label or a Brazex, and then a 6.6 .6 to one gear ratio reel. So you're seeing kind of a lot of commonality between uh, the reaction baits that I use on the Ozarks and the tackle that I use. So very, very similar. In fact, you could get away with one rod and reel setup. You know, I, I'll, I will forgive you if you use the 6.6 to one gear ratio for the jerk bait. A lot of people throw a lower speed gear ratio. It's fine. It just doesn't allow you to catch up with the fish very quickly. So you can absolutely use it. You can use one rod for all of these three reaction baits that I'm talking about. Actually, there's, there's four reaction baits, but this one's a little bit different. Maybe, maybe not actually, now that I think about it. So this one is not a bait that I have gone out to the Ozarks and thrown yet. Uh, so I'll just throw that out there, but I know it's going to work 100%. This right here is the Midwest Finesse Swim Jig right here from Z-Man. They just came out with it last iCast. Uh, it's got a very, very small design. Like this is the three inch minnows and I had to cut it down like half an inch and it's still you know a little bit bulky for it but this right here is going to be a really good swim jig for fishing those ultra clear ozark lakes okay i know it i can feel it in my bones this is going to be a really good one um it's got some really realistic color patterns uh it's got i think this one right here is like a, a quarter ounce jig head and it's got a really light wire hook so again you can use it with the lighter line uh, i would say i would go with 12 pound test and i would still use that medium 7.3 medium versus series rod uh, with this one and uh, you know any of the the uh, reels that I just mentioned before would go with this but I saw this one on my counter because I just got an order in and uh, was kind of sifting through everything I was like oh my gosh that one is going to be a killer so this one because I haven't fished it yet is kind of a bonus so this one is definitely going to work and it, I think it was designed around those lakes like the Ozark Lakes because it's called the Miss Midwestern Finesse uh, swim jig. So definitely check that one out. I think that one's going to be a big player, but not one in, in, you know, uh, full disclosure that I've fished before. All right. The next one is going to be uh, the only soft plastic that I've got on this list, but it's a really, really important one to have in deep, clear reservoirs like you see in the Ozarks. And that is a Ned rig. Okay, especially during the pre-spawn, the Ned rig is gonna play a big role. I like just using the, uh, the original TRD uh, Finesse Shrooms jig head or the Ned Locks jig head. That one is my favorite if I'm fishing more around wood or something like that. But the, the Ned rig is gonna do extremely well um, you know, in situations where you just need to downsize, you need to use light line and just slow it down a little bit. Maybe you find the fish with a jerk bait or a crank bait and you just want to capitalize on as many bites as you can get in an area. This one might be the, the ticket to get more bites. And you know, a lot of people mistake the Ned rig as a small fish bait. It is not just a small fish bait. It catches a lot of small fish, but I've caught up to a fish just shy of 10 pounds during a guide trip on Chickamauga with it. And I've caught plenty in the four to five pound range on just this exact setup right here. And so it's a really good one. It's gonna catch all four species on the Ozarks. 
And uh, I like this color, man. New Money is actually one of my favorite overall Ned Rig colors. It's got a little bit of green in it like some emerald, some some green pumpkin. There's a lot going on in this color and I, I really like that one for the Ozarks because a lot of times you're seeing that kind of like deep greenish blue tinted water that's really, really clear and that's a really good color. But, you know, green pumpkin, uh, Drew's Craw is a good one. There's a lot of different colors that you can kind of mix and match uh, and figure out which one the fish wants on any given day. Um, I'm, I, and I mean, I, I hate to be a broken record, but again, rock transition banks are going to be a big deal with the Ned rig too. But I would say that another structure that you really need to factor into when it comes to, uh, the Ned rig is channel swing banks. So whenever you have like a Creek channel where the fish are eventually going to spawn and you have the Creek channel butting up against one side of the Creek. Um, it's probably going to be like in the form of, of a very steep or bluff bank. That is a really good situation for a Ned rig because you can work it down that steep bank or that bluff and uh, get a lot of pre-spawn fish that are waiting to move up. So that's where I like the Ned rig. Uh, finally, I'm going to give you guys another bonus, one that I have not fished on the Ozarks, but I know for sure are going to play a big role. So. As the water starts warming up and the, the fish start thinking about spawning, top water becomes a really big deal on the Ozark Lakes. Uh, you know, the um, Whopper Plopper has been a huge uh, player on the, the Ozarks. Um, walking baits is a big player. Top water in general is just a really good way to, to get some, some big bites on the Ozark Lakes. And this bait right here, you've got to try it before, you know, it becomes really popular and the fish see it a lot. This is the Hellraiser from Z-Man. Okay, so you guys have seen this before. I've done videos on it, but it's essentially got this like very weird kind of pencil popper-esque design as far as the body. And then it has a chatterbait blade on the back and it's got two big treble hooks and a, one with feathers on it. But this one right here, it creates, uh, it's kind of like fishing a buzz bait. It has that, that same kind of like spitting and sputtering action, and it, but it's also like fishing a walking bait because it has a tight erratic uh, back and, and forth kind of wobble to it or walking action because that, that chatterbait blade on the back is really working the, the front of that bait. And it also has a ton of vibration. So this, this bait will call fish from a long, long distance. And I know for a fact, well, I can't say I know for a fact, but I can feel it in my bones that the Hellraiser is gonna be a big, big player on the Ozark Lakes. So um, this color right here, this is, uh, this is Chrome. And this color right here is Ghost Shad. Those would be my two colors that I would choose for fishing the Hellraiser on Ozark Lakes. And, uh, and the reason for that is you've got one that's super shiny. It, it's gonna reflect a lot of light. So for those sunny days, you want one that'll reflect that light. And then you've got one that's transparent. It's got this, this very realistic bait fish hue to it. It's got a little bit of purple on it. Um, and this one right here would probably be better for, uh, you know, those cloudier days. But, if I was to fish this, which I will in the Ozarks this year, uh, if I was going out, I would be using a 7.3 medium heavy rod. Uh, I would be using a 7.2 to one gear ratio reel and something in the 20 to, or the 15 to 20 pound range. Uh, you know, honestly, you could throw fluorocarbon with this because it's just like a buzz bait. You don't have to worry about it. it it's not gonna sink if, you, if you're using fluorocarbon because it already sinks if you stop the retrieve. So you can use fluorocarbon with it, you can use monofilament with it, but you can also use braid. Uh, the only thing that I don't like uh, using braid uh, with this, uh, the only reason I don't like using braid with the Hellraiser is because inevitably you're gonna have that situation where you make a cast and you get a knot in the braid and that bait goes flying and there goes your Hellraiser because unless it lands on the ground, it's going to sink to the bottom fairly quickly. You're not gonna be able to get to it fast enough. But uh, so I like, I like using monofilament or fluorocarbon that's not stronger than braid, but it's, it has a little bit more elasticity. So like if you do hit a knot, it's probably gonna bounce back at you. So you also have to be quick on your feet. 
Um, anyways, guys, those are just some of my thoughts for Ozark Lakes. The, uh, some of them, there's two of them that are, are new baits that I've never thrown on the Ozark Lakes, but just absolutely caught my eye and made me think about fishing the Ozarks. And the other ones are absolutely tried and true. The only one that I didn't mention was the Alabama rig because honestly, I don't use the Alabama rig that much, but that is definitely one that you also want to throw on the Ozarks during the pre-spawn. Uh, but anyways, guys, let me know if you have any questions about Ozark Lakes and my experience on them uh, in the comment section below. And also, guys, for the baits that, that 44tackle.com has on their website, I'm going to put affiliate links in the description below. So if you use that, you get 10% off of your order and you support the channel a little bit. So I'd really appreciate it if you use those links to purchase these products. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.